Hope everyone's having a good day and welcome back. Still waiting on the Brothers War inventory. Actually, the set boxes, bundles, and draft boxes have just shipped. Still waiting on the collector boxes though. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for our retro frame serialized artifacts, let's go back to 2019. This will be my first War of the Spark opening on camera. Much simpler times back in 2019. I do believe, I could be wrong, this came out right before Throne of Eldraine. So this was, again, one of the last sets. There was only uh, draft packs, draft booster packs. They did have the bundles, uh, some pre-cons, but no collector boxes, no set boxes, commander pre-cons, any of that stuff. So it's one of those sets where if you get a foil, it's a big deal. And this was the Planeswalker in every pack gimmick. So let's see how we do. I know we're not going to make our money back because... The single prices are way down on this set. <coughs> Excuse me. All this stuff rotated out, of, rotated out of standard a long time ago, so it's just kind of been a victim of been, been uh, being forgotten about. Some of the cards are still good and are still staples, so let's see if we get some of them. So there's our Planeswalker. Now, they say a Planeswalker in every pack, and a lot of them are just uncommons. A lot of them you can't even inc increase the loyalty counters on, but some of them are actually useful, so we'll put the Planeswalker in a separate pile. Narset's reveal, and then good uh, good artwork on this. I know this is technically, I do believe, a Ravnica block set. And it seems like Ravnica sets aren't always well received, but this one was. People were really big fans of this. Box prices are good. Uh, they were like 180 for a while, now they're like 150 not terrible for a set this old. We've got Kaya, Bane of the Dead. So your opponents and permanents, your opponent's control with Hexproof can be the targets of... Yeah, so this basically nullifies Hexproof. So that's what I was saying. Some of the uncommon, uncommon Planeswalkers are actually really useful. Then we've got Finale of Glory. And then, yeah, that's definitely a Ravnica-style art land right there. I just dropped that pack on the floor. My God. All right, let me go grab it. gonna be a little out of order after that but okay so we get a planeswalker for the rare so that was our rare so we pulled the rare first we got sarkon masterless and then let's see if anything else is here that's a bitch and zombie token right there the zombie army that guy right there that guy is just nasty as far as the artwork i don't know if i'd actually ever run him okay and that was it for that pack then but yeah one rare per pack and in, in some cases you may get two rares if one of them is a foil but that is not, not going to happen very often in these old style boxes. And there's our Planeswalker. We got Korra there. Behemoth Beckoner. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. I'll take that. And we got the Elder Spell for the rare. Yeah, and really good zombie tokens in this deck. I'm sorry, in this set. Now this said, um, there was like these crazy Japanese mythic uh, car, like kind of like these lottery cards from the set. I don't know how you get them though. I don't know if you have to open the Japanese uh, boxes or if they're randomly inserted into these. All right, next pack. Spellkeeper Weird. Oh, there, there we go. There is, uh, there's one of the best pulls in the set. So we got a Lily Anna, Dread Horde General. That is a mythic. So what does this one do? Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. That right there wins me over. Then create a zombie token. You can make people sacrifice stuff. And then each opponent chooses a permanent. They control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. Wow. I've actually ran her before. I'm, I don't know why I'm acting like I'm seeing her for the first time. I think I had bought her probably like a year ago for a deck and then just never got to run it much. So it's like seeing it for the first time again. We got Chandra, Fire Artisan. Did we not get... Okay, yeah, that's the gimmick. So we don't get an uncommon Planeswalker. At least they give you a rare one. Did it say that on the box anywhere? I know there was somewhere with the War of the Spark where they were advertising the Planeswalker in every pack.
And we got Nissa who shakes the world. That's a really good one right there, especially for landfall decks. You get extra mana out of her. Just a rare on her. I'm surprised. I thought she would be a mythic. And there's a foil, so that foil might be worth a few bucks. We got Blast Zone. Good land right there. We'll put the foil in its own spot. And I was a fan how the packs actually have different artwork on them. I don't know why, I just like that. They don't really do that with sets anymore. I don't know if that's like a cost-cutting thing, but we don't definitely don't see that as much. Charm Stray was building cat decks recently to sell, so I saw a lot of them. Sun's Heart. Then Command the Dread Horde for the rare. That one I like right there because you can pull a bunch of stuff out of your graveyard. I do believe it's... And, oh, it's actually any graveyard you can pull stuff out of. Yeah, Planeswalkers or Creatures in any graveyard. But you're going to pay life for their casting cost, so that could get a little expensive. But it's Command. They're just gaining a shitload of life. You'll be good. We got a Johnny. So a Johnny is a rare Planeswalker. And this the Great Hearted. And then, okay, just a foil common, but again, foils are actually rare, so we'll put that right there. About a third of the way through. Okay, then we got another Behemoth Beckner. Commence the end game. The spell can't be countered. Draw two cards in a mass X where X is the number of cards in your hand. Oh, yeah. That's a big thing in this, the Amass thing, making those zombie army tokens a lot bigger. I would like to get a Citadel out of this box. Wow, look at that advertising, advert, advertising core 2020. Wasn't this the time when they used to put the arena codes in the packs randomly, or, or am I making that up? I feel like you used to get a lot more arena co codes... And we got Narset here, part, Parter of Veils. So this is probably the most commonly run Planeswalker in Magic, in my opinion, just because of that ability right there. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So if you can cock block that on your opponent, that's really bad. Because again, com any, any Magic game, you always want to be drawing cards, don't want to be top decking. Then we got Living Twister. I gotta research that then, where you actually get those uh, those lottery Japanese style cards from the set, because some of them are like a couple hundred bucks. So, again, I don't know if they're randomly inserted into these. They may not be. Dread Horde Invasion. Yeah, I guess if you're getting ready for a war, you gotta have a big army. So, hence, hence the theme. I don't even know the story of the Ravnica block. What happened? Why there's a war? I guess there just has to be a war, right? It's always like that. Another Narset. We've got Kranko here. Tin Street Kingpin. Goblin action. That almost looks like the Citadel in the background. I don't know if that's uh, supposed to be the same thing. So I do have more boxes of this. I don't know how many of these we're actually going to open. I just... I didn't get to open a lot of this, so this is kind of new for me, so I'm enjoying it, but we probably should keep them sealed. Arlen, voice of the pack. Arlen's been around for a while. She's an Innistrad right now. We got Bio Essence Hydra. And then I guess there's Assassin tokens in this set. Okay. A lot I don't know about this set. Yeah, maybe we'll do another box or two of these, and we'll go ahead and put the rest into the vault. Because again, this is one of those special sets before everything was overprinted, too many variants, so I think a lot of people are going to hold it dear into their hearts. We got Tybalt right there, very nice, uncommon on Tybalt. We got Casualties of War, just choose one or more, okay. I'm uh, playing around with a Golgari Commander deck right now, so that might be a little something for me. Getting high on my own supply, it's not good. I should just sell all this stuff. Is that a oh, that's like a Ravnica, uh, is that a binder or a book? I gotta, I gotta take a look into that later. Not on your guys' time. Then we got Sublime Artificer for the Planeswalker. Then we got that dude right there. He's lost. He gets photoshopped into everything. I don't know if you've ever seen that on Twitter, but people just photoshop him. He was there. 
He was there for the Will Smith slap along with other many un uh, uncomfortable moments. And we got Jaya. Jaya. Jaya's been around for a while, not just in the new Dominaria. We got Plain Wide Celebration. So is that them winning the war? Possibly. Then we got a Giant for the foil. Just a common. So yeah, look at that. Compare that to like a, a collector box now. A collector box, you're going to walk away with over 100 foils. We've ripped open over 15 packs so far. Just four foils so you can see the difference. Tamio, Collector of Tales. Spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. So that, uh, that could be really useful right there. Discarding is just brutal and nasty. I think discarding is one of... Uh, I know people don't like land destruction and mill. No one likes anything. People don't like counter magic. People don't like removal. But discarding is just so brutal. Back in the day, turn one, mind twist with like a... Black Lotus or Dark Ritual, game over. Obnixis, Ob Obnixis still around. And there we go, there is the Citadel. This is only like a $6 card, but I did need another one. So, there's a lot of decks that just revolve uh, basically around getting this thing onto the battlefield. So it's a 6 mana, legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than paying its mana cost. And then if you want to, you can sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. So again, there's like a, a vintage deck that revolves around the spell Tinker and just getting that onto the battlefield ASAP. I think you just run so many artifacts, then you, you probably get one out turn one, then you tutor for the Tinker, get that thing out, and then just start casting stuff left and right. Spells are so, so overpowered. Another tip. Oh, so this is a good box. We're getting all the big hits. So this is the most valuable card in the set outside of like those foil Japanese style art cards. So we got Finale of Devastation. This thing is always run. So two mana sorcery, uh, two mana and X. Search your library or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more creatures you control, get plus X, plus X, and gain haste until end of turn. So you can see why that's a big deal. That flipping dinosaur just coming for you, getting your creatures all riled up. That's a usually, that can be a game ender right there. That's why people usually run one of them in a deck. So let's see what else we can get. This is fun. This was, uh, this opening was starting off a little slow, but we're getting there. And that uncommon right there, that's like a three or four dollar uncommon because of that stupid, uh, all those sacrifice decks. I'll have to put that to the side. Let me get a shield mage. And then a time, I almost said time warp, time wipe. Return a creature you control to, to its owner's hand and destroy it. Okay. I, uh, wow, I like that. I could definitely use that. You, yeah, return your commander to your hand. Then destroy everyone else's creatures. Then they just make all their permanents phase out with Tefri or something like that, and you're screwed. I love those kind of plays, though. love just back and forth, putting stuff on the stack. Then we got the Wanderer. Uh, uncommon plane, our planeswalker for the pack, an uncommon one. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be, would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. And you get to eg exile a creature for power four or greater. You'll get that use twice out of her. You can't add loyalty counters to a lot of these planeswalkers, but I like that one right there because non-combat damage is hot right now. Then we got Feather the Redeemed. All right, this is going a little slower than I thought, but again, I'm kind of liking absorbing all this. A lot of the cards definitely do look like some of them were in the other Ravnica sets. Then we got Storm of Stone. She's been around for a while. Another Blast Zone, so we'll put that in the rare pile. Have I missed other Mythics? I don't know. Maybe that was the only Mythic so far that we actually pulled. Because nowadays, everything's a Mythic, right? Everything is special. We got Swarm's Eminence. Oath of Kaya. Let's take a look at that one later. Kind of want to rip through the rest of this box really quick. This is too long. Nobody's probably watching anymore. And that's all right, guys. I get it. My attention span's terrible, too. Captain of Chaos. Karns. Uh, oh, my God. I learned to say that word the other day. I'm going to work on that. So we got Karns, whatever there. Badison. Bastion. That's it. 
Sorry guys, I didn't grow up. I grew up playing Magic, not reading Lord of the Rings and other stuff. So some of these words, I just can't say them. We're getting there though. We got uh, Anarch of Bolas there. Yeah, I guess a lot of these, uh, Planeswalker in every pack, but a lot of them just aren't the best. But that's okay, because there's plenty that are actually good. Another Storm of Stone. Finale of Eternity. That is a mythic. I wonder if we skipped that before. What does this one do? So, two mana X sorcery. Destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. If ten, if X is ten or more, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so I could definitely use that one. Probably wor only worth like 50 cents now, so I can easily take it. Not worry about having to sell it. Another Wanderer. And we got Living Twister. Did we get that one already? I don't think so. I feel like we got Living Something, but not Living Twister yet. Alright, 16 minutes. Let's, uh... Just a couple packs left. Probably go over 20 minutes here. That's okay. And yeah, we're now, now we're starting to see some duplication. Okay, we got a Kaya though. Just an uncommon Kaya, but a foil. So very nice on her. The foiling was even better back then. I feel like with the mass foiling, you guys have seen it. The Pringling and everything. It's just not the best quality sometimes. And the foils do scratch easily, like I always say. So sleeve up your foils right away. Another Narset, very nice, and then we got, ooh, Artifact Vehicle right there. I don't know what that is, but that looks cool. We'll have to take a look at that more later. Just a rare. All right, so we got so we five packs left, four after this one. Let's see what we get. Oh, Ashiok, so our uncommon, uncommon Planeswalker for the pack. Spells and abilities. Your opponent's control cannot cause the controller to search their library. Ooh, very nasty right there. Cock blocking those tutors. Another blast zone. Then we get a common, another common foil right there. So a lot of blast zones. Let's fix our piles real quick. One thing I did see uh, in the bulk over here, though, if you're looking for a nice cheap card, again, this isn't a world beater, but a cheap card to get some extra landfall. We have the Boreal Grazer. So one mana, 03 with reach. When it enters the battlefield, you can put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. So that can be useful, especially if you have a way to flash that back out a few times. Have it re-enter the battlefield. All right, so let's rip through these last four packs. Next uh, box opening will hopefully be Brothers War, but it's probably going to be uh, Kamigawa Collector, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what comes in the mail. Another Kaya. Massacre Girl. She looks just nasty. I don't know what she's up to. Nothing good. Where did I put the finale? I'm a mess here. I don't even know where I put the finale of Devastation. We will find it later, though. Okay, then we got so Okay, I didn't I didn't realize Soren was in this set. So they really brought everyone back. So we got Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord. As long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink. Ooh. Can see some synergy with that. Two packs left. And I'm gonna find that finale of devastation. I just lose cards sometimes. I think I shipped someone like a borderless vampiric tutor once by accident. We got Dovin, we got Apex Hybrid. Last pack, guys, we're gonna get you out of here. Again, Brothers War, Brothers War, Brothers War. Serialized cards will be here soon. Let's see what we end with. We'll get a price up, we'll just see how we did. Then we got Rogue Shadow Mage, and we're gonna end with Single Combat. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and we will be back.